been quite a day, quite a day, quite a week, quite a month. But here we are. Hi, my name is Faye Mata, if you're here for the first time. Uh, I'm a voice actor, and uh, I voice Aoi Hinami in a uh, bottom tier character, Tomozaki. She's the female lead of this show that is about, uh, well, it looks like it's about some gamers who play a game that looks very, very, very much like Smash. It's about Tomozaki, who is this guy who isn't very social. He's a little bit, you know, down on himself. But there's this girl that comes along that tries to help him out with real life. She plays, she plays TACFAM as well, and is also very, very good at it. He's basically number one, and she's basically number two in this game. She tries to help bridge, um, bridge the gap for Tomozaki, where she wants him to help realize that life can be really fun and a great, as they call it in the show, a, a game. But otherwise, I'm doing something a little bit different uh, today. I asked, uh, have video games ever comforted you uh, when dealing with your struggles, like personal struggles? This is kind of an open question, uh, and I let people answer it however they wanted to, and I've definitely gotten some responses that are kind of like mini novels. <laughs> and then the other disclaimer, there's a disclaimer, I'm not, I'm not a mental health professional, I'm just a person that likes to help people, and I'm streaming, so might as well, you know, give give people a place to vent, and we can talk through it. Here we go, here we go. Sunbro says, When I was growing up, I had a lot of social anxiety from not knowing how to connect with people. Strangers scared me, and even ordering my own food was difficult. Among other things happening, I wanted to be somewhere else, as someone else. I started playing a lot of RPGs and JRPGs and immersing myself in those worlds to get away from a world I didn't know how to fit into. But they helped with that on the outside world too. Because I could save and reset in the games when I made decisions, I could figure out easier what to say to people when I stepped away. Talking to people became fun. Uh, there's been times when I felt understood about loving games, mostly little references I fit into speech that I, that if others get, it's like an inside joke. It brings us together. Um, yeah, this reminds me a little bit of me, a little bit of my younger brother, especially the not being able to speak up to order, order your own food. Yeah, I think you, you described it so well. I like how you ended it, because yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's clear that you've experienced a lot of growth, finding finding a tribe, I guess, and uh, clicking with people who um, made you feel more comfortable. And then, yeah, it, it did be it definitely became more fun to talk about hobbies and interests uh, once you realize there are people like you out there. Tucker says, "I'm a very anxious and depressed person." Both school troubles and social troubles can send me into a downward emotional spiral very easily. So, to take my mind off it, I'll immerse myself in long sessions of Fire Emblem or Xenoblade or whatever. I pass the time waiting and put my mind at ease while doing it. Oh my god. This is so relatable. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tucker, for sharing. It's a lot of pressure. And yeah, so when it comes to solving problems, it feels, it feels good, like you get this sense of, you get that dopamine hit whenever you complete a task, right? This, where you see a problem, and you have to wait for it because you know that the only way for this to conclude is to just patiently sit on your hands, that drives me absolutely crazy, and I do not blame you. It's not, it's not always the best idea to escape problems, but this is a perfect example for when you when you can and should. <laughs> yeah, my hair is a little bit see-through. I I'm kind of late too lazy to adjust. Well, okay. Actually, now it's bothering me. Let me see if I can fix it. <laughs> now the screen isn't eating my hair. <sighs> Faye is becoming Twitch. <laughs> Swift says, "The music in video games, especially Nintendo games, always puts me at ease while growing up." However, other kids listen to the tracks of rising pop artists or whatever, and I found myself unable to connect my musical interests with them. 
Something I found confusing was how people listened to Daft Punk, which had a lot of synthesis in it, only to react to what I liked very differently, even if both were composed using synthesis, as if the term video game in their views tarnished the tracks I've listened to growing up. Oh my god, yeah, I, I definitely feel that. <laughs> That's definitely uh, something I experienced as well. You say it's from a video game and they go, oh. But at the end of the day, my peers didn't get into my head. I continue to enjoy music from video games more so than other tracks. That's great! I like how we've actually gotten some different themes so far. Um, and in this, in this case, this is about music. But I think it's the other way around for me, where I, I remember not wanting to listen to, listen to anything mainstream because I was like, it's mainstream and it's all popular. I definitely had my edgy teen years. <laughs> but then I realized, you know what? Some of this music that I really like in video games are, they're actually like the, this pop music is created in a similar way. I kind of like that. But as you said, at the end of the day, they didn't get into your head and that's what's important there. And that you continue to enjoy the music from video games. Bit of a simple example, but I'm Indian and grew up in the USA, hating more than anything that I had dark skin and was just generally different than everyone. The problem is that in pretty much every game at the time, the protagonist also looked like, looked nothing like me. The ultimate effect was that I just really wished I had light skin. Part of my fantasies, especially ones involving being part of game universes, was that I got to have light skin like everyone else. The change came with Pokemon Y, the first game with trainer customization. Pokemon was basically my most favorite game universe, and when the option came to be able to play as a character with skin tone matching mine, at first I was still completely against it. But my friend and I had planned on playing the game together, and she said that if I didn't pick the skin tone option ma matching mine, it wouldn't feel like me. I caved in and chose a, a trainer with a matching skin tone, and almost instantly I felt more connected with the character than I had ever before. And it was the start of me learning to accept that part of my identity rather than just hate rather than hate it just to fit in. TLDR Pokemon Y helped me accept my race and culture instead of hating it and making me stand out just by letting me play as a brown kid. Wow! That was very deep and insightful and vulnerable. Thank you so much for sharing. Because yeah, like walking through a toy aisle as a kid and not see like seeing every every doll was white for example <laughs> really skews your your percep your perception of what being normal should even look like but at the end of the day it's really nice that you can be yourself and it's really it's really rewarding to learn to appreciate yourself and who you are and love you for yourself Jacob says, I feel like I was always behind in life, didn't comprehend reading until third grade, according to my school. Zelda and Pokemon taught me to read by age six. Now I teach English to elementary and pre-K, and I was outcast for not having correct social cues due to my autism. Dating Sims, like Honey Pop actually, taught me what the right and wrong things to say to women were with their dialogue options. And I'm about to hit my one year anniversary with an amazing woman. Games were always there for me to teach and have fun when friends and family weren't. Wow, that's powerful. It's a, it's a shorter paragraph than others, but it was just as powerful. Uh, thank you so much for sharing and congratulations on your one year anniversary. That's beautiful. Kellen says, I'm a big fan of Pokemon and Lego games. I know a few that think it is weird to like them at 20 plus years old. It's not, not at all. I'm not bothered by it because it's what I like. Good. I don't tell them what to like or I don't tell them to like what to dis or what to like or dislike. I do, however, know others do get bothered by it. It's upsetting to know that people stop playing their favorite games because someone said it makes them childish, not mature, etc. Even though video games have a targeted age group, I feel anyone should feel comfortable pl uh, with playing whatever game they want to play. That's about it. Take care, Faye. Thank you, and I think that's a really important thing that you brought up here. I like playing, you know, colorful, cute games more than I like really dark, drab ones that make you sad. And it's just, 
Personal preference. That's it. Doesn't matter what age you are. I think they're comfy. If you're comfy with them, that's all that should matter. I don't understand people who judge others for liking the things that they just enjoy. I have seen 40-year-old parents in Pokemon TCG tournaments playing in matches with their kids. That's beautiful! See, I like that. I feel good, but sometimes it's hard to tell parents when you're playing online and they tell you to pause even though you can't pause online games and they get mad at you for it. Ah, yes. I definitely relate to this one! When they tell you to pause but you can't pause the game, but you have a clash of goals and there's a disconnect because of misunderstandings. That is a very difficult one. If it's a regular hobby of yours, it helps to be able to... to try to explain to them how it works when you're not in the middle of it. I know I've tried before with my own parents, but that's not really... <laughs> I mean, I'm not living with my parents anymore, but I, I just remember. It was definitely annoying! But they just didn't understand, you know? Sometimes I think it takes, um... It's kind of scary, but introducing them to the hobby, in a way. Like, have them play one round or something. <laughs> I don't know. 10 out of 10, one of my most proud moments was when I knew that my dad liked DC Comics and I got him to play DC Universe Online for 6 hours straight. Oh, that's definitely a W. That's a dub right there. <laughs> I like it. It's a good way to get people to understand you. Literally just introduce them to your hobby. <laughs> Uh, you'll be surprised how much you learn about each other when you try to teach someone else something that you enjoy. Cam! There's a lot to be said for video games that simply make us happy. I play plenty of games that make me question whether or not I'm having a good time, or if I'm just being entertained because it's something to do. <laughs> what a relata relatable sentence right there! Am I even having fun with this game, or is it just something to do? <laughs> this has been a bit rambly, but my main point is that the games that we play can help us even when we don't necessarily need it. Having a hand to hold or a routine to slip into outside of our own lives can provide a lot of comfort. Uh, something you mentioned that we haven't talked about yet is about having a routine to rely on. Um, I think that's really nice and a good point. Things can fly at you from every every direction, whether it's school, a job, your own personal relationships, etc. So something like a video game to escape with that's always consistent in your life is a really good point and a really nice thing to have. Zero idea what's wrong with me. My brain moves at about a million miles an hour and almost never stops. Now for a while I've been hated or disliked by most of the people I've met. I'm not a person that does well with other people and I can say that my brain being the weird energetic thing it is at least contributes to that. It's hard sometimes. Now Faye, you seem like someone that has a good grasp on how to be energetic and have people still like you. My only solution with people was just not to talk or express anything. It often works, but as you can imagine, you often feel like a ghost. <laughs> this whole thing about, about me being able to be bubbly and be accepted by the people around me or or whatever, that's that's not something that I was born with or was ever easy for me to do. It's something that I changed over time. It was a very conscious thing. What you described about sitting in a call with many other people talking, but you're quiet the whole time, but they were okay with that, I relate to that. I might seem talkative because of my stream, because it's my stream, I'm gonna talk, but some of my closest friends, some of my first closest friends I met online. And a lot of that time was me literally just sitting in a call with them where I wasn't saying much, but they were all just a lot more talkative and talking about whatever, but it brought me joy just to sit in there and listen to them. My point is, what you're seeing today is not the same person I was a long time ago. Don't regret all the stuff that happens in your life, even the, the hardships, because they seriously build you up to who you are today, and it's only gonna get better. You're gonna love your flaws. I love my flaws. I'm definitely not perfect. Nobody's perfect. But how boring would it be if everybody was the same and absolutely, like, flawless? It's, it's your flaws that make you unique. And you might say that unique is, like, bad or something. It's not. It's not. 
I really think everybody learns to to appreciate their unique qualities, even if they're like not something you want at first. You know what else is interesting about this too? Like I already mentioned growing up kind of socially awkward. It's like I figured out how to be normal, right? And now I want nothing more than to express myself differently now that I have the blueprint for normal. Does that make sense? It's like, okay, I know how to build normal. Now, how do I build around that? <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> Angelo, I was always very uncomfortable with my own body. At a point in my life, anxiety and everything got me weighing more than 280 pounds. After these positive experiences, I managed to feel better and my, about myself and I can now proudly say I lost more than 100 pounds in one year and I'm happy with myself again thanks to that feeling those games gave me. That's a beautiful story. Thank you so much for sharing, Angela. It really is amazing the kind of confidence just a little bit of an escape can give you. That's like a reset. Meg says, Hi Faye. Video games helped me cope while I w was extremely toxic slash abusive relationship. I'm assuming this means I was in one. After spending way too many years questioning why I felt I wasn't good enough for someone who treated me so horribly, I got the courage to leave my abuser last April. Oh god, good for you. Good for you. Cut forward a couple years around the start of the pandemic. I was working a different job that I loved, but due to medical reasons, I had to take a lot of, a lot of time off from it. So I threw myself into video games even more. It was during this time that I started playing Witcher 3, which I played countless times over since. In it, there's a main quest that deals with domestic abuse. I cannot express to you how much this storyline helped empower me to cut those final ties. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Meg. This couldn't have been easy to write out. Um, a terrible thing that you experienced. And, uh... And a really, really beautiful thing that, that video games helped you with, that it was able to help you with that. It really shows the power of, of video games sharing characters and their own experiences as, as if they could be real. And introducing different perspectives that make you personally reflect on your own lives. I'm so sorry that you had to deal with such an abusive relationship for so many years. I unfortunately relate to this as well. I don't know how long yours was, but mine was about three years, and I should have not let it... I shouldn't have let it last past, like, two months, because I should have known right then and there. <laughs> yeah, like, you blame yourself, say, like, oh, maybe I'm not being patient enough, or whatever, when there are obvious signs that... well, should be obvious signs that it's toxic, and there definitely need to be changes there. God, this could not have been easy for you to do. It's it's crazy hearing so many other people's stories because it's it's a common thing. It's not uncommon for that kind of thing to happen. Especially if you're a person that cares deeply for other people and you want to make things work no matter what. I'm happy that this guy was able to help you. Crazy. What storylines can do. What ca fictional characters in games. Yeah, we're all proud of her. We're proud of Meg. And I'm crying. Thank you, Faye. Happy sad tears, though. It's okay. I'm glad. I mean, not that you're crying, but well, I'm happy that you're happy. Faye, you've taught me to break off bad relationships. From this day forward, I'm dropping Pichu. <laughs> I didn't expect that to go that way.